the Nigerian Naira will continue to remain under pressure for the remainder of 2016 into 2017, and um, it's likely to be around 350 by the end of the year. So Nigeria's economy has slumped significantly and this was due to the expected devaluation of the Naira and the Naira has slumped around 30% and it's devalued. So what's your outlook for the Naira for the rest of 2016? Well, it's looking rather bleak in the Nigerian economy right now. Um, I think we have to understand why this devaluation has taken place. Of course, it's due, it started because of the slump in oil prices um, since mid-2014. Um, we've seen that um, with Nigeria being a major oil-dependent economy, um, this has somewhat um, reduced foreign exchange supply into the economy. So as a result, it's put downward pressure on the currency. The currency is now down by about 35%. Um, year to date, and um, the outlook continues to look bleak. We saw yesterday the central bank decided to hike policy rates as a means of trying to um, reduce quickening inflation, which has um, been stemming from foreign exchange pass through effects arising from imports. Um, but this is unlikely to stem the slide of the currency. Because for that to happen, we need to see significant amounts of foreign exchange inflows and export receipts going into the Nigerian economy, which is hard to come by because of weak confidence in the market. So as a result of that, the, the Nigerian Naira will continue to remain under pressure for the remainder of 2016 into 2017, and um, it's likely to be around 350 by the end of the year. Wow, so you've mentioned the slump there in Nigeria's economy. So now moving on to Kenya. So Kenya's quarter one economic growth saw an increase of 5.9%, and this was mainly down to a boom in the tourism sector. Now, are you expecting this growth to continue, and was this a realistic view and expression of the economy? Yeah, I think uh, Kenyan economy, unlike Nigeria, is more broad-based. It's not as um, dependent on one particular commodity as in Nigeria. So, I mean, with Kenya, the tourism industry, which has, is now on a recovery trajectory, um, has helped to boost economic activity. And at the same time, we're seeing... Um, improved activity in agriculture, in particular tea and horticulture, um, thanks to improved weather conditions that has helped to boost agricultural outputs in the economy. And then you've got the manufacturing sector as well. Although things have not been great recently, but um, it's picking up and would expect that to contribute to, to real GDP growth. So I think Kenya's outlook is more positive. Um, GDP growth, we expect it to be at 6% this year and even next year close to around 6%, even though it's an election year. Um, so that should help to boost opportunities in the economy for businesses. And Ghana's economy seems to be fairly similar to Nigeria's in the sense that it is heavily dependent on oil and also it has very high inflation standing at around 18.4%. So how's Ghana's economy looking at present? Can you talk us through what's happening there? Well, Ghana's economy, I think Ghana is now on a recovery path thanks to um, the IMF intervention since April last year. Um, last, just prior to that, um, it was really difficult um, in the Ghanaian economy. The currency continued to slide, reaching about, uh, down, was down about 30%, um, and that contributed to weak um, to weaker economic activity, but now we've seen Ghana going through a recovery path because of reforms under the IMF program. And this has helped to reduce um, fiscal spending, and that's the reason why we're seeing inflation somehow trending downwards, slowing to some, eff eff to some effect, but it still remains high, and that's the main reason why the Ghanaian um, central bank decided to retain the tight monetary policy stance at 26%, which is rather high for any economy, um, but those measures need to be in place for it to come from it's a um, challenging situation and to resolve the imbalances going on in the economy. So I think with the IMF presence and, the, and strong engagements, 
with donors and the government's commitments to the reform program, we're likely to see some improvements and progress in, um, in Ghana's um, economy over the short term. There, there's an election on the way in November this year, but um, I still expect continued policy um, environment. Well, thank you so much for joining me on the line to provide your insights. It was a pleasure. Thank you. That's all from us here in the Geneva studios, but if you did like this interview, do like and comment on dukascopy.tv.